Welcome to EDUC 646 at Mercer University. I'm Dr. Mary Kay Bacayao, and this uh, little tutorial is courtesy of Louisa Melton from Spalding County Schools, and um, she has put together this PowerPoint to help us understand the uh, ESOL components of the Title III legislation. The, this provides a language acquisition program to limited English students. There are procedures for identifying English learners, procedures for exiting them from the program, procedures for communicating with limited English parents and guardians, and a procedure for testing and offering additional services to English language learners. First, let's start talking about the procedure for the identification of English language learners. The first thing that's done is a home language survey is completed at registration. Now, if this home language survey indicates that there is another language other than English, then the students need to be screened for English proficiency. This screening must take place within 30 days of enrollment at the beginning of the school year. However, if a student transfers in in the middle of the school year, only two weeks is allotted for this to take place. If a student transfers from another school with records that show they were active in that system's ESOL program, then services must begin immediately. Students transferring from another school without records must be screened within the above time frames. If it's at the beginning of the year, 30 days, and if it's in the middle of the year, two weeks. There is a um, WAP test that is used as a screening tool. We're going to talk more about that later on in the PowerPoint. There are certain scores uh, for qualification in kindergarten. If listening and speaking, if the raw score is less than 19, they qualify. And if listening and speaking, if the raw score is between 19 and 28, and the reading score was less than 11, or the writing score was less than 12, they would qualify. There's the one to, one to 12 qualification for services. If the composite score is less than five, it's determined by the WAPT calculator. We're gonna see examples of this further on in the PowerPoint. Okay, here's the site, the WIDA site, World Class Instructional Design and Assessment where we can find the WAP score calculator. And as you can see, just like we've been um, studying in class, we have speaking, writing, listening, and reading are the main areas of proficiency. And then we have the proficiency levels. In this case, we're using one through six. Now our book uses one through four, but the state of Georgia uses one through six. Okay, so we're going to look at this score right here, uh, the composite proficiency level. If it is less than five, um, according to the WAPT calculator, the student qualifies for ESOL. All right, now that we've identified the ESOL student, what happens next? Uh, we're gonna send home the parent notification of services form in English and the student's home language. And uh, when the form is returned by the parent, we make sure that the initial referral sheet is marked. So if the parent accepts the service, we have um, certain things that take place. And if the parent refuses the service, we have certain things that take place. Now, I'm running out of time on this video, so in a few minutes I'm going to go to part two. So now that the English language learner is identified, now what? We begin the student services. It could be pull out, push in, or a schedule class. And catch me with part two. Okay, bye now.